I was designing an electrical ignition system for my new cartridgeless rifle, and it seemed that setting off a charge of gunpowder would be very simple. After all, everyone knows that all you need to do is put a spark through a pile of powder, and off it goes. However, actually doing it proved to be anything but easy. A couple of years ago, I put up a web page showing that small sparks could not set off black powder. Perhaps what we need are some really big sparks. This stun gun puts out a 100,000 volt spark, so that ought to do the job, shouldn't it? This is Hogden Tight Group Smokeless Powder, a fast-burning, double-base propellant especially good for smaller caliber pistols. Here, we're dropping one grain of this powder onto a conductive plate, and we're hitting it with the sparks from the stun gun. Amazingly, nothing is happening. Here, in slow motion, you can see the sparks hitting the powder granules and blowing them all over the place. You can even see the flash as the spark hits the surface of the granules, but they just won't ignite. Maybe the sparks aren't really that hot. Here's a piece of heavyweight coated paper being given the same treatment. The paper didn't catch on fire, but looking at it under a microscope, you can see it's just full of small holes burned completely through by the sparks so they're certainly hot enough. Maybe what's happening is that the granules are being moved out of the way so they aren't heated too much, and if the sparks were forced through the powder, that might be better. Here's an experimental igniter similar to a spark plug with a ceramic insulator mounted in a breech plug with a central electrode. If we place a collar around it, we can confine the powder and then force a spark through it. Connecting this up to the stun gun, you can see the sparks inside the chamber. Now we can add about a grain of the same powder, pack it down and turn on the power. Whoop, still no result. The powder dances around and we can see sparks running through it, but mm. still no ignition. Well, maybe black powder will work better since it ignites at a lower temperature. See, even the label warns about sparks. Now who would want to do that? Hmm. No, that doesn't work any better either. Even in slow motion, you can see the sparks moving the granules around and flashing when they hit the surface, but it just won't burn. Since black powder conducts electricity, let's line some up and put a spark through all the grains at once. No, nope, sorry, no luck there, even though you can see the spark traveling right through the line of powder. Okay, let's try packing it. Now we seem to have the same non-result that we got with smokeless. A lot of motion, but nothing else. It's clear now that ordinary sparks just won't set off gunpowder. However, since black powder, at least the graphited types, is moderately conductive, there may be another approach that would work. If we pack the powder between the igniter electrodes and pass a lower voltage through it, we should be able to heat it by resistance heating, the same thing that makes the wires in a toaster glow. Let's test that. To do a quick job of heating it up, we can use the electric charge stored in a photo flash capacitor. When charged up, this capacitor from a disposable camera holds about 7 watt seconds of electrical energy, and if most of that energy can be dumped into the powder held in the igniter, it should be instantly heated to ignition. A very strong word of warning. The voltages and currents from these capacitors can be lethal, so don't do this unless you're very familiar working with high voltage circuits. Well, it works, and this principle was the basis for my first electrically fired rifle. This breech loading black powder rifle fires a 22 caliber ball, slug, or pellet with about the same power as a 22 short and uses the ignition system I just showed. The same principle was used for the ignition of my modular black powder pistol. This pistol can also use a duplex load where the smokeless powder is ignited with a priming charge of black powder. 
However, we still have no way to ignite smokeless powder was the original object of this adventure. The electrical ignitions attempted so far use direct current, which in the case of the spark comes in a single pulse, but there's another possibility. High frequency, high voltage alternating current, such as from the 7000 volt unit shown here, produces a smooth arc rather than a clap of power. This one delivers about 7 watts per second, and as you can see from this, once an arc is started, it's hot enough to catch a piece of paper on fire. Now, if we attach this to the igniter, we may at last be able to ignite the smokeless powder. This was the ignition system used in the fourth version of my electrically fired smokeless powder rifle. But even though it fired reliably, there was still a problem. Because this type of power supply can't deliver its energy all at once, it takes a perceptible amount of time from trigger contact to the rifle firing, something like a slow flintlock. If you watch closely, you can see the delay between the spark starting and the powder ignition. This is not too bad a fault, but I wanted a system which fired instantly when the trigger contact closed. To do this, I needed a system which had a high enough voltage to pass through a non-conductive powder like smokeless, but enough energy to instantly ignite it, much like the resistive heating used for the black powder. One characteristic of an electric arc, or spark, is that once the voltage can jump the gap and start the spark, the ionization of the air greatly lowers the resistance so it takes much less voltage to maintain the arc. Here you can see the arc, once it starts, can be greatly extended because of this phenomenon. This principle may allow an electric ignition where we start with a weak spark but then use that spark path to pump a lower voltage but high current through the powder creating a lot of heat and hopefully igniting it instantly. We'll start with this small spark coil wound around a ferrite core. If we put a spike of voltage through those few outside primary windings, such as by the discharge of a small capacitor, the magnetic pulse that generates will induce a much higher voltage in the secondary windings underneath, and we should be able to generate a nice little spark. By using this coil to create a spark, we've set up conditions where the lower voltage from the photoflash capacitor can follow in the path started by the tiny spark and drag along the much higher energy stored in the capacitor. Here's what happens when the capacitor is added to the circuit in series with the coil. Boy, that spark is hotter than hinges of hell and has actually melted some metal from the ends of the wire. We should be able to hook this up to our igniter and finally achieve ignition. But there is just one major problem. The capacitor is always in the circuit, so the igniter electrode is always hot and could cause a severe shock, burn, or worse. We need a way to automatically connect the igniter with the circuit just as it fires, and it turns out there's a simple way to do that. This is a simple spark gap switch made from two stainless steel rods held just far enough apart so the capacitor voltage can't jump across the gap by itself. But as soon as a trigger spark jumps across, the capacitor charge follows and can go directly to the igniter. Now we'll add a tiny charge of smokeless powder, place a light tamper on top of it to keep any grains from flying away, and give it a shot of juice. Ah, the spark blew the tamper off, but the powder didn't light. This shouldn't be possible. I'm creating a multi-thousand degree flash in a pile of powder and nothing happens. Maybe I should take up a new hobby. After a lot of thought, I think I know now what's happening. The flash is extraordinarily hot, but the electric charge is dumped quickly in the order of a fraction of a millisecond. The discharged spark always has to flow over the surface of the granules, and no matter how hot it is, it just doesn't last long enough to heat them to ignition. If we add a resistor in series to limit the current flow, the spark will be less hot and explosive, but it'll last longer. Here's what happens with a resistor in series. The re result is a lot less impressive than before, but let's see what happens to the powder. That did it! Even though we're losing a lot of energy in the resistor, the spark is slowed down enough for the remaining energy to do its work. Now, let's see if we can set off other non-conducting powders. Here's some Goex clear shot, and some Shockley's gold, 
And finally some Goex black powder. It looks like all types of powder work. Now that I finally know how to do it, it's time to go back and modify my rifle so it doesn't shoot like a flintlock. When I finish, I'll show it in another video and web page. In the meantime, this web page shows all the details of the work shown here.